Today I'm not going to work on a car, but I'm going to work on a guitar. Uh, this is a Fender Fender Starcaster. This is a uh, kind of a real low quality entry level guitar that uh, a friend of mine, his, his parents actually gave me. My son plays guitar. I don't play guitar, but my son does. And so the parents of this friend of mine, this was my friend's when he was a teenager. So they're like, oh, maybe your son wants this guitar. So um, we have it. But it, um, it you know, it, it plays. It's not great. Again, it's not super high quality. But um, it certainly has some potential. So there's a few things we're going to do to fix it, fix some of its kind of major issues. Um, to start off with, uh, the, some of the knobs are pretty stiff and hard to turn, and when it's plugged up to the amp, you get a crackling noise when you turn the, the pots, the potentiometers, so we'll see if we can clean those up. This um, uh, jack here is loose and wobbles around. That's probably not good for helping the, the tone or anything. Um, it's also really dirty, uh, so I'm going to give it a take it apart and give it a real thorough cleaning. The strings are ancient, so I'll put new, some new strings on. Um, the action's not really, really good on it. Uh, let's see if we can get the the camera to pick this up. So, so one thing. So, if you look here, the strings are pretty high off of the 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 neck board, the frets there, towards the the the, the high end of the of the scale. Um, and if you sight down this neck, again, let's see if the camera can get this view. But if you sight down that neck, it's really straight right now. Actually, another way I can show you this is if I touch, you know, a string to the, to the top fret, and if we look along it, you can actually see that that string is touching all the frets up along the neck there. So the neck is really supposed to have a very slight um, inward bow. So that would be a bow kind of in this direction. So that when you press the strings down at the, at the top fret, you get a little bit of a gap between the, the strings and the frets in the middle. So this doesn't have that. So to compensate for that, the little set screws down here on the bridge are cranked all the way up to lift the strings as high as possible to prevent it from like buzzing on the frets when you're playing. You know, when you're playing here, you're playing kind of in the, the, the mid-range. If the strings were lower on the back, then the strings wouldn't clear the frets very much here and you'd get a, a buzzing a fret buzz. And then another thing, the sides of the frets are actually really, really rough here. When you slide your fingers along it, you feel it. And in fact, to, to the point where my son says that when he was playing it, the, the high E string, the top string, will sometimes catch on the fret. He'll strike it, and uh, it will get stuck on a fret like that. So I'm going to see if I can kind of file the edges of these frets down to make them smoother on both the top and the bottom so that it's easier to, to slide your hand up and down the neck without catching or grabbing on the sides of the frets and hopefully prevent the string from catching on it as well. When you take strings off of a guitar, you never want to clip them or cut them while they're under tension. The sudden decrease in tension is bad for the neck. So what you're going to do first is you're just going to crank the tuners down, you know, one at a time until there's no tension on the string. So I'm going to do that for all six of them. Alright, now all the strings are loose. I'm going to clip them with pliers and that's going to allow me to then take off the twisty end from the tuner part and then slide the rest of the string out. Some of these tuners are really jiggling around because these nuts are loose. This is tightening against wood and wood is not, you know, as rigid as metal like on a car. So I'm just just making them just just snugging them up just so they're not going to come loose.
So I've figured out what the problem is for the edges of the frets. It's a few, few issues. First of all, the frets are not the right arch for the fingerboard. So both of the ends are, are kind of uh, lifting up a little bit. And then the end itself has such a sharp kind of uh, edge on it, filed onto it, that it's, uh, that it's grabbing your finger. So on this one here, I was able to, to pry the fret up, put a little extra bend into it, file the edges, and then glue it back into place. So I'm going to do that for the next one. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but the little teeth on the, on the fret, you know, did do a little bit of tearing on the... Uh, the fingerboard, but when I go to glue this back in, I think it's going to cover that all up. I have kind of made a little tool out of a piece of steel bar stock where I've sanded in a gradual curve, which seems to be a really good approximation of the curve of the neck. Now with the file, I'm just going to kind of take these sharp edges off a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of super glue onto the edge of the fret here. Tap it in gently with my hammer. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure the frets are all level. So to do that, we have to make the neck straight in the unstrung state. So if you remember with the strings on it, the neck was pretty straight. Now if I put a straight edge, on top of all the frets, you can see that my straight edge actually rocks up and down a little bit. And that's because the neck is now bowed like this, so that the, the middle is higher than the, the ends. So there's a what's called a truss rod. There's a metal rod. There's a hole here. There's a metal rod that goes all the way through the neck. And if you look on the back side, you can see this uh, inlaid piece of wood. So there's a, a groove in the neck here and this metal rod is going in there. And the way this works is the pocket for the metal rod is at an arch. So the wood in its natural state tries to take a shape um, and then when you tighten this metal rod you're applying a little bit more tension. So this rod is curved through the neck as you tighten it it's going to try to straighten the rod more, which is going to overcome the natural curve of the wood, and it's going to make the neck, you know, bow more this way. I'm putting masking tape on the fretboard between the frets. I'm going to uh, mark them with a sharpie, and then I'm going to, if needed, file them down to make sure they're level. And I want to make sure I don't nick the fretboard with the file or with the sharpie. Now I'm going to use a file and kind of in long steady strokes upward I'm going to place the file on the on the, the tops of the frets and stroke upward and I'm going to be able to see where the file scratches away the black sharpie 
is kind of the high point. So I want to make sure that the high points and all the frets are all equal. I don't know if the camera can focus this close. But now I'm happy with the way the, the frets look from a leveling perspective. So I can see that on the tops of each fret, my black Sharpie has been, uh, has been filed off. But if you notice, like this fret here, the file marks are wider than like on its neighboring fret. So this fret was a little higher and required a little bit more filing to get to the same level. Here's another one. This one's relatively wide. So what I'm going to do now is with a small file, like this one, I'm actually going to very carefully kind of profile, kind of file on the sides, both sides of that to uh, kind of make sure that the, uh, the profile of the fret is kind of curved on the top and not just, not just flat. So now I have to go do that individually for each of the frets, look at each one and see how I want to curve it. Now we do lots of sanding and buffing on our frets. So we filed them and the file leaves little scratch marks. And really we want the frets to be very smooth and highly polished. So I'm starting off with some 800 grit sandpaper. And I'm just sanding on each fret. And now because my masking tape is here, I don't have to be super careful or anything about the neck. So sand on one side and the other side and do that to all the frets a bunch of times and then actually I finish up with um, 1500 grit sandpaper and then a little piece of scotch bright to kind of do a final polish on the on the tops of them. So you do this for a long time and then you're all done with the frets. Now I'm cleaning up the electronics in the body um, these potentiometers were very stiff. I've got some electronics cleaner here and uh, just by spraying it inside the, the potentiometer and a little bit on the shaft, I think it's just you know, years of grime and then uh, just you know turning it back and forth to kind of exercise it, I think that'll help get kind of the, the old sticky grease and grime out of there. And yeah, just a few turns and it's already starting to turn more easily. So I'm going to do a few more sprays and turn it, and then hopefully all the knobs will turn nice and smooth. I'm real happy with the way the guitar turned out. It's nice and clean, all back together, fresh strings. I've adjusted the, the, the saddles here to make the action lower than it was. 
if I press some of the strings down at the, at the top frets, you can just see, I don't know, the camera's a little blurry here, but you can just see that there's a little bit of a gap between the strings and the, the middle frets, so there's just the right arc on the neck. I've um, adjusted the pickup heights, so when you push a string all the way down at the, at the top frets, you want to, there to be kind of um, the same distance between the string and the pickup. So the strings are obviously a little angled, a little sloped, so typically your front pickup is a little lower than your, than your rear pickups. And typically you set it up so that the high string sides of the pickup are closer to the strings than the low string sides. So the, um, the higher strings have a little bit less mass, so they need to be a little closer to the pickup to get the same, the, the, the same kind of volume or the same amount of tone. I've also adjusted the intonation, which are the little screws on the backs of the saddles. You know, when you, when you play a string, when it's open at the 12th fret the, with the two dots, that one is one octave higher. And so you want that to be exactly an octave higher, so really um, you can adjust the saddle here to make sure that the distance between the 12th fret and the saddle is equal to the nut to the 12th fret. So um, you use a, I use a, a tuner, a chromatic tuner for that that I plug in, and so I can play the I can play the open string and make sure it's in tune, and then I play one octave higher, and then if it's sharp or flat, I can adjust the the saddle here. If it is sharp, it means that the distance from the saddle to the 12th fret is too short. So you screw in the screw at the back, moves the saddle rearward and makes the note a little bit lower. And if it's flat, it's too far back, you can screw it so it's a little bit more forward. I tightened up the uh, the cord jack. The, the knobs all now turn really nice and easy. So that's a, that's a good thing. The, the whammy bar works. So now to put it into the hands of my son and see what he can do with it.